What is this place? It's nice to meet you both at last. This is Babylon Alley. Here we make it our business to know the streets and provide children with the opportunity to control their own destinies. Clara, Mr. Green said we might be able to help one another. In exchange for our services, we ask a small favor. Well, why not? You seem to have taken most of my money. Why not take a small favor, too? There are several factories about the city that are powered almost entirely by child labor. Those children work long hours with little pay, and most are not permitted even to leave the factory grounds. They suffer terribly. I need you to save them. A small favor. In return, we offer you intelligence. Something you clearly need. Oh, hold on a minute. I'm late for an appointment. What are these terms? We accept. <laughs> Pleasure doing business with you. Yeah. 
Here to help. Thank you. Keep your voice down. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Be one of the clinkers. Good place to start. Come on, in, let's have some. A huge mistake. You saved Of course I did. Now I'd like to talk to you about a little organization called the Rooks. Oh. Uh -huh. 
You seem to want my employer's attention, Mr. Fry. Oh, I positively crave it. But you'll do for now. As you like.
that's the way. Ah, there you are. All that stands between you and Whitechapel is the villain controlling the borough. Kalok has demanded you settle the claim for territory in a gang fight. His loss? Yeah. I'm sure you can put this to better use than I can. Oh, what's this, Greeny? Assassin Christmas. Hmm. Gather your allies. Mr. Rexford K. Lock has agreed to your terms and waits for you at the Whitechapel train station. He's bet his train on the fight. No K. Lock. Hmm. No matter. Is to be broken. Oh well, at least we have a train now. It's not all bad.
Scott is dead. Whitechapel is no longer in the hands of the Blighters. You now have the chance to join our ranks. We welcome all who would stand up to Starrick and his cutthroats. You bastard! I'd rather throw myself to the tracks and run Bertha another mile for that doughty bow bag. Kaylock? <laughs> He's left the station. Mel! Hello, fancy pants. And who might you I'm Evie be? Fry, and this is my brother, Jacob Fry. Pleased to meet you. I'm Agnes McBean. A delight. I thought I was getting a promotion. I suppose I'm out of work now. Come work for us instead. <laughs> I won't bail your heat. You pay better than scraps? Oh, I'm sure we can at least match that. Then may I present to you Agnes and Bertha, lady and locomotive, at your service. I'll be in the next car. A hideout on the rails? What an excellent idea. Yes, it all worked out rather well. Now, I would like to follow up a lead on... Jacob? Is this serious? I'm not doing anything until this gets fixed. I believe I know someone who can help with that. I knew you would, Greeny. You know, a mite of money goes a mickle bit in this city. Think of the power of good you can do with the purse you bring. You talk of a store in London. Well, now's your chance. That there map shows who to speak to. Oh, friends, if you will. And maybe you can save us all from having to lay down our knife and fork before we're ready. Now, enough shop talk. Believe Mr. Green said that.
Oh, blast them. Alec, whatever is the matter? I have been intercepting nothing but poppycock propaganda about soothing syrup and whatnot. No, I swear to high heavens, if Starrick's monopoly continues... Alec, I beg your pardon. These are friends of mine. Evie Fry and her brother, Jacob. Oh, um... Alexander Graham Bell. Linguist, inventor and technical expert. Alec, I have something of a favor to ask you. Can you fix this? Oh, looks like the casing is cracked. Oh, comes apart. <laughs> I see. Could have used one of these to fit my fuses on top of Big Ben. Alec is installing a new telegraph line for our Free Press Association. To combat the Static Telegraph Company. Now, if I can mend the fuses connecting independent lines from Big Ben, Staric will be weakened. Only, we are somewhat at a handicap. And, there. Oh, I've removed the mechanism, so it may work with your bracer. I'll put it to use immediately. <laughs> Jacob, wait. Mr. Bell, allow me to help you with your fuses. Oh, you will not find me too proud to accept Miss Fry. Oh, uh, we can use my carriage, if you'd be so good as to hold the reins, though. I'll take that. Um, I, I can help you. Oh, Miss Fry, I am so glad you could assist me. You really ought to be here by now. I say, I hope you understood I meant today. So, Mr. Bell, what inventions are you concocting? I intend to develop a phonetic telegraph that does not just convey dots and dashes, Miss Fry, but human voice. Phonetic telegraph? Hmm, sounds a bit of a mouthful. You could just call it a telephone. Telephone? <laughs> How bizarre. Anyway, as I was saying earlier, the press has become entirely dependent on the Star Telegraph Company. Which is why Mr. Green has asked you to set up a free line. Yes. What is more, other small independent companies have had their lines sabotaged. And they have little means of Easy. finding any Easy. broken fuses, which are... To be found on top of Big Ben. Correct. Especially as one needs a special government power. They will not be a problem. I'll repair the fuses. All set.
That should do it. Thank you very much, Miss Fry. I will now be able to continue with the installation of the new line. If there's anything else I can do to help... Uh, certainly. Please do come and visit. Oh, uh, I was toying with this device and have noted down the formula for you. It's not perfect yet, but by golly, it works.
there and teach you a lesson. You're a minute away from death. Don't go easy on Ah, Miss Fry. Uh, I was just showing Jacob the first message was received via the mended lines. Oh, uh, you can keep the rope launcher, by the way. Um, we've managed to procure another one for your brother. Excellent work. Thank you again. You're very welcome, Mr. Bell. We can now defend the principle of impartial news and free speech. Free is fair, but free and brief is far better. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, Fry, such caustic wit. <laughs> and on that note, we must depart. <laughs> oh, uh, good fortune to you both. Uh, call on me at any time. <laughs> <laughs> 